Now, despite glaring shortcomings in Africa's food security, as illustrated by the droughts and related famine engulfing the Horn of Africa, female researchers, it seems, still make up less than 25% of agricultural scientists. African Women in Agricultural Research and Development, or AWARD as it's known, is addressing that gap by building the capacity of African women scientists conducting pro-poor and agricultural research through very uh, distinguished fellowships. Joining us now is Dr. Lusike Wasilwa, who's Assistant Director of Horticulture and Industrial Crops Research at Kenya's Agricultural Research Institute on the day of the Award Fellowship Awards in Nigeria. Thanks so much for your time, Lusike. Let's start off with the need to distinguish between agricultural scientists as men and as women. Why are we concerned about the female component? Because females should constitute 50% of the scientists, but right now we're only at 25%. But when we go to um, on-farm activities, 80% of the farming is done by women. So where do these women disappear to when it comes to science and agriculture research? We need yeah. to do something about this. And that's why we have programs like AWARD ensuring that it builds capacity of women in leadership in science so we can also develop uh, products contribute to data that informs policies mm. that are effective in terms of trying to reduce uh, um, uh, food security and also trying to increase mm. the role of women in agriculture productivity. Let me be the devil's advocate, Lusike. Some would yes. say, yes, it's true. Women till the land, work the land. But what they yes. need is to become large scale farmers so that their endeavors are commercially viable, so that they're doing more than putting food on the table. They're creating agricultural businesses. They don't really need to be scientists to do that. Let me tell you, behind every successful man, there is a woman. <laughs> but when we look at African customs and culture, land ownership is not by women. Now there is a change. The younger uh, generations were getting ownership of land by women. But until that happens, we have to keep on trying to fight for our space, trying to elevate the importance of women. And men do acknowledge that when their wife works closely with them, the income that they generate is even mm. higher. So it's not just agriculture research, but even on down to the ground to really show the role of women so they're able to control mm. the, some of the money that they generate, not where they generate this money and all of it mm. is being controlled by the man. It's very disheartening where here the women are doing 80% and they cannot control yeah. any of the finances they generate. We, need, we have to do something. Let's we're 50% of the population. Uh, let's talk about how the science makes the uh, farming a lot more lucrative. We're hearing about uh, GM crops, for instance. We're hearing about the need to create interventions to adapt to climate change. Um, we're talking about making the land yield different varieties of crops. What's a priority for you? The priority for me is to um, give women what they're used to working with. Women need firewood to cook. So the solution for that is let them plant fruit trees, nut trees, fodder trees. So there's food for their animals, there's food for them, there's firewood for fuel, there's shade, and it also contributes to carbon credits. So the answer and solution for the food ins insecurity in Africa is trees. We need more of these trees. They tend to have drought tolerance or environmental resilience. And this is what Africa needs to focus. A lot of focus is on cereals that are not drought hardy. Mm -hmm. The drought hardy ones are like sorghum, millet, but maize in a lot of areas that are where it's grown in Africa, there's never ever get, farmers never ever get to harvest a crop. When, now when this happens and this is what they're depending on for food security, there's a problem. But there are other crops, you know, like cassava that are drought tolerant. So when we, when we look at technology and the technologies we require, when we use GM technology, that is a last resort. GM is the most expensive technology. Mm. But at times we have no choice. If we are growing a maize and then it's destroyed by an insect, the larger mm. grain borer, and there's a technology that can reduce that loss, that is healthy for the environment because you're not using all of these pesticides, then why not use it, mm. really? Uh, so when we're using technology, we're trying to increase production and productivity right. and produce food that is safe and nutritious that can also contribute to in right. increased income. And that is what we're trying to do here. So of the women who are going to be granted these fellowships, how are we going to yes. ensure that the work that they're doing academically translates into things that are tangible on the ground? How are they going to be working with women in the fields, with women in cooperative movements, those kinds of areas? 
the women who have been selected have those projects, and that's why they excelled above the rest. They're already working with activities that impact on all gender, particularly women, on the downstream, and they're working very closely. There's a, a project that uh, I've been working with on oil palm, and oil palm is very high in vitamin A, and in the area where we're focusing in Western Kenya, we have a lot of vitamin A deficiencies. So you can see the kind of activity I'm doing with my partners is going to have a big impact, not only on the environment and climate change, but also when the, the farmers are able to make the oil themselves yeah. using what we refer to as matter technology. So those are the kind of things that award is giving us the empowerment to be able to harness what we're doing, but do it better to ensure this impact on the ground.